Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna discuss typical wiring of an AC induction motor, and helping us out is Dave Felt. He's with Baldor, and uh, Dave has the dubious distinction of most appearances on how-tos, I think. Well, thank you, Tom. <laughs> Today, we're going to review the procedures for a typical wiring of an alternating current or AC induction motor. All right, where do you wanna start? Certainly, safety is our first concern. Before handling any wires, we must double check to be certain these wires are not live. Okay. This can be done by using a voltmeter. You should also be sure to use the typical lockout tagout procedure that you would use. Okay, as uh, we have right here, something like that. But we also need to have our PPE, personal protective equipment. Make sure you're wearing the right PPE for whatever job you're doing. All right. Well, once we're certain there's no incoming power, we can begin to do our wiring. For this demonstration, we'll be using a Baldor Premium Efficient AC motor. We will also use wire strippers, wire nuts, and electrical tape. In order to access the conduit box, we'll also use the nut driver. All right, there's a joke there, but I'm not going to go into there. Okay, all right, wh where are we going to get started? Well, in order to access the wires, you first remove the conduit box cover. This exposes the wire leads will connect to the incoming power. This wire here represents the power that's coming from the plant to the motor. Okay, so that's, so that's to our fictitious plant. Here's our motor right here, and we've already removed the plate. Now, I notice that there's multiple leads, and I'm a little bit confused right now. There are multiple leads representing the three phases of this motor. This particular motor is known as a dual voltage motor. The first thing we want to do to, is locate the ground wire. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, this is a green wire. This wire should be connected to the location provided internal to the conduit box. For this application, we'll assume that our wiring is for low voltage operation. Okay. Based on this, we see that we connect wires 4, 5, and 6. We also connect wires 9 and 3, 8 and 2, 7 and 1, per the diagram that you find on the face of the motor. Connect each of these to one of the three incoming leads for the incoming power. Okay, now I see the plate that we have on right. It kind of gives you uh, that diagram of what you need to do. But what's the proper way to connect the wires? We've got the chart. It tells us how to put it together. What's the best way to do it? Well, in order to ensure a solid connection, it's best to use good sound electrical practice. I'd recommend looking at each of the wire ends. Make sure each have nice, clean, available wire. All right, looks good. Connection is held in place by using UL-approved wire nuts and then appropriately taping the connections to make certain they remain in place. All right, now we've already done three. You can see they're finished here, but we have three other wire leads right here, and they look pretty good. They look clean. And exactly. they're ready to go. All right, how are we going to so put these together? So now what we do is we'll take those three leads, uh -huh. collapse them together, tie them off with a wire nut tie, and right. then finish them by utilizing good electrical tape. Yeah, everything looks great. I mean, it looks good right now. Once the wires are connected, double check them. Let's make sure that we followed the wiring diagram that's on the side of the motor. Okay, it looks good and we should, uh, yeah, I think we're all ready. Terrific. Are we good to go? Well, almost, Tom. At this point, I think it's a good idea to mention that some motor applications utilize additional wires. For example, this motor is a nine lead motor due to the fact that it is a dual voltage motor. Motors with single voltage wiring would typically have just three leads. In that example, the wires are simply connected to T1, T2, and T3 of the incoming power. Of course, we must remember to properly connect the ground wire as well. Now, now, is this a typical motor? I mean, don't some motors have additional modifications? And then how would we accommodate those motors? Uh, great question, Tom. Actually, some motors may have provisions for thermistors, heaters, brakes, auxiliary blowers, winding RTDs, as well as various feedback devices. These would all be wired at this time per the instruction manual provided by the motor manufacturer. Okay, now this is an across-the-line run motor. Now, are there other methods for running a motor? Well, yes, there is. Uh, motors can be run on inverter duty power as well. You will recall we discussed inverters on a previous MI how-to video. Incoming power to the motor actually comes from the output of the inverter. Yeah, we were talking about a pump that day, if I remember. Right. Um, what about the rotation of the motor itself? Well, the connection of leads dictates the rotational direction of the motor. All three phase motors are reversible. To reverse the direction of rotation, simply disconnect and lock out the power and then interchange any two of the three leads for the three-phase motor. That will en enable you to rotate in opposite direction. Okay. For single-phase motors, check the connection diagram to determine if the motor is reversible and follow the connection instructions for lead number to be interchanged. Not all single-phase motors are reversible. One other concern you need to think about is the cooling of the motor. In, the, in this case, this motor is a totally enclosed fan-cooled motor. Rotation of the motor dictates the rotation of the fan. 
you want to make sure that the fan blade is set up and run such that it delivers the best cooling. Okay, so it seems we have our dual voltage motor wired for the low voltage configuration. We've also determined that we have the needed direction of rotation. What else have we got to do? Well, at this point, it's cleanup time. We simply tuck the wires into the conduit box and reattach the conduit box cover. From there, we're all set to put power back to the line and operate our motor. All right, well, Dave, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. That was Dave Felt from Baldor, and uh, it seemed pretty simple, but remember, Safety first, proper PPE, and make sure you follow all the directions. If you have any questions on anything you saw here, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location, and they'll be able to help you. And uh, hopefully, today, this will help you with your practical application. And don't forget to look for other how-to videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching.